Good afternoon, everybody, uh, and welcome. My name is Antti Valkonen. Uh, I work as a project manager at the Department of Economics here at the School of Business in Aalto University. Uh, my day-to-day -day currently goes mostly to managing an initiative called Aalto University Data Hub. Uh, previously, I've worked uh, at Helsinki Graduate School of Economics uh, COVID situation room, as well as, a, uh, as well there as a manager. And today I'm here to give you an introduction to, to the world of Finnish registry data. Uh, this, the webinar is especially useful for, I would say, if you've never uh, used registry data before, so, so you might not even have a clue what it is. Or, or, or you have heard about it, but but would like to know more. So, so if you've if you've previously already used registry data, or you have uh, worked at at uh, at say, for example, statistics, uh, Finland secure uh, remote access environment, uh, then perhaps you already have at least uh, a fair fair idea of, of most of what I'm about to tell you. Uh, so then, without further ado, on today's agenda, um, I will start with a with a one slide explanation of of, of uh, what register data is or what I mean by it, uh, and then jump right into to uh, sort of the nitty gritty. So so I will talk about the the providers or, or from from another perspective, the collectors of of register data. Uh, I will, uh, and this this uh, sort of uh, provider uh, links links uh, very heavily to the to the purpose why registry data is collected, uh, which which has uh, significance, especially from the research research aspect aspects of of things, uh, which which uh, relates to linkability, especially. Uh, I will uh, scratch barely the surface of, of legislation and data protection relating to register data, and then continue, continue to access how or, or where you, you can access, access this kind of data. Uh, I will talk shortly about, about use cases, so, so how, where, and, and why is, is registered data used for research, perhaps. I will give a case example uh, uh, from my own, own background, the Rajya School of Economics uh, situation room. And then I will talk short, shortly of, of the future of registered data or, or the use of it for, for especially research purposes. Okay, so what is registered data uh, in short? Uh, in simplistic terms, registered data can be thought of as, as observational. So uh, uh, let's take an example of, of, of you earning a salary and, and your employer sends that uh, information to the tax authority and the tax authority records it, uh, maintains it, keeps it. And then if, if a researcher has a question that how much uh, this individual or this group of individuals earned uh, at this given time, uh, they would have a uh, very uh, definite answer at their hand. But then uh, let's uh, take another example uh, that, that we wouldn't have access to this uh, registry data, but we could uh, do a poll, ask people how much did they earn. Now, we would be relying on the on the trustworthiness of the of the subject answering that question rather than than somebody actually looking at at the exact amount of euros or dollars or whatever that you you have earned so so the observationalness of, of registered data is, is is quite uh, important another point is that the uh, registered data consists of the whole group so so the tax authority records each and every uh, individuals who reside in Finland and, and earns any type of income in Finland, 
their uh, record. So, so it's not a they, they don't go about their business by taking a sample of Finnish people and and recording their earnings, but they they record everybody's. Uh, they also record it continuously uh, with a register such as uh, tax registers. It's it's recorded all all the time, daily, hourly, even perhaps. Uh, but of course, some registers can be can be recorded twice a year, even or or a variety of ways for sure exist. Uh, uh, important aspect is that this this kind of data is recorded and maintained for usually some functional purpose. So so the fact that we're here talking about the research aspect of it is 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 not the main reason is not the principal reason why why register data exists at all. Uh, and then then an important uh, part of it is is uh, the unit of observation. So we, we're not talking about aggregate data. We're talking about unit level information. Often it's uh, it's the individual human being. Uh, but not not only uh, almost almost anything can can be recorded uh, and, and, and be the observation of, of object of observation uh, so <laughs> a little bit of terminology registers are collected or or they're held in uh, registries uh, perhaps they're collected by registrars but but uh, yeah uh, it's not particularly new invention if 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 you think back uh registers uh at individual level uh, are probably as as old as, as civilization uh, taxes are are uh taxes or or some sort of food food storage uh information are probably the first first ones uh church records are uh famous famous for being Perhaps the the first uh, continuously and, and long time recorded population records, and and lastly, uh, register data is, is regulated by a variety of, of different legislation, and, and and there are plenty of uh, issues related to that. Then that we will just uh, skim through in this. So who provides or, or who collects register data? Well, the, the variety of different registers is, is truly, truly vast. So, so uh, I'm not sure if somebody actually knows the answer of, of how many registers are there in Finland. Uh, in in uh, recent talk with Statistics Finland, uh, I, I heard uh, the number 100 being said when talking about registers, but whatever the exact figure is, it's 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 large. Uh, the most important object of observation is 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 likely the individual human. So a lot of different information is being recorded of of the individual human. Uh, basic sort of population information, uh, date of birth, where do you live? Uh, and so forth. Uh, health information, your diagnosis is prescriptions. Uh, whenever you go to the healthcare center, whenever you pay for healthcare services or receive benefits for healthcare services, these are all recorded. Income earnings, etc. Encounters with the with the law, uh, any sort of judicial proce procedures or or. Or procedures with the police, uh, your wealth, uh, for example, your vehicles or or buildings, uh, etc., land. Uh, they all have their own registries. Employment, unemployment, uh, social uh, uh, things, uh, welfare's benefits, uh, family relations. And and so on and so on. They they are all all recorded and and usually each of these uh, that I've written, for example, in bullet point, they have their own 
own institutions or ministries or or some such that that are doing the the collecting and and they then work as as, as also register data providers uh, besides the individual human important objects of observations are are uh, well companies obviously but but the list is vast so so i mentioned uh with with uh, wealth uh vehicles vehicles is also also one uh even something as as small as 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 uh as a type of medicine can be a, a register uh can have a register and and yeah the even though uh for example in the in the case of vehicles uh it, it can be that uh the individual human has uh, is being recorded of having a vehicle but but this 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 also also goes vice versa that that the vehicle is recorded of of having or being owned by this this individual and then this individual and then this individual and and this sort of already hints you that this is this is all all uh, linkable and and that's the sort of richness of of registered data so the most important uh registry authorities are and this is not a a list that 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 captures them all for sure uh but let, let's start with the with the most likely the most useful ones so statistics finland and they're they're different from from each of the the uh, ones that that i explain later in that they record registry data or they don't they don't record it they collect registry data from other uh providers uh as a, as a second and and they're the purpose for this is the secondary purpose of registry data, which, which in their case is statistics, but, but then they also provide this information through their research services for researchers, in which case it become the secondary purposes as uh, research, scientific uh, reasons. And, and the, the gist of, of Statistics Finland from research aspect is that they collect data from well, all of the ones below, for example, and 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 more. So, so if one wants to sort of one solution for for data statistics, Finland is the way to go. But but obviously they might not have everything that the researcher is interested in. Uh, other important uh, registry authorities are are the social insurance institution. Uh, Finnish Institute for Health and Welfare, Tax Authorities, Ministry of Employment and Economy, uh, Finnish National Agency for Education, Ministry of Justice, Finnish Transport and Communications Agency, and uh, well, the list list just goes on and on. But but these are perhaps that came to mind as as, as being one of the most important. Ones. So then. What, for what purpose are, are all these uh, authorities collecting this data? Is it is it for the good of the researchers and 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 so that uh, we can do research with quality data? No, absolutely not. Uh, uh, registered data is is usually collected for for a uh, functional purpose of the authority collecting it. So so even though they might have a requirement of, of making some sort of statistics or something out of it it also often is that they they need it for their decision making or 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 the service they're providing uh, sometimes a, other agencies uh, than the ones that collect the data also need need the information from from other agencies to provide their ser service well uh, so let me elaborate uh, with with this example, so for example, the, the tax authorities they they collect your uh, information on your earnings uh, in order to tax you, obviously. Uh, but but they also record this in order to inform other agencies, such as uh, the social 
social insurance institution uh, about your earnings so that they can calculate various, various uh, benefits that you might be eligible to. Uh, and then, then provide their service better for you. Uh, educational data is, is obviously recorded for the purposes of educating. So, so, so it, it, it's crucial for 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 the school to know if if you have not been uh, present in present in, in 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 your education or or the grades you get, uh, etc. Uh, but also also educational data is is uh, used to inform form, for example. Again, the social in insurance institution uh, about your right to study. So then uh, uh, they can they can count, uh, give you the right uh, right for study benefits. Uh, the data is is passed on to to higher education institutions to so that they can assess the quality of the applicants that they they receive. Uh, and well, I, again, these are just examples the list goes on and on uh, diagnosis and prescription data uh, well obviously the main purpose is to give you the right cure cure or help you with your ailments but but again the social insurance institution uh, usually uh, covers the cost of these or at least the partial cost of these and and they can only do so if they have the information Then that's that's sort of the primary purpose. Then let's talk about the secondary purpose. So so uh, because this this data is being collected and and it is of of high quality. There's lots of it. It, it would be silly to just uh, leave it unused after after it's been collected and used for the functional purposes that it's used for. So so thus thus uh, statistics are are. Uh, built from register data. Uh, this is usually done by Statistics Finland, but then also, also it is used for research purposes or, or it can be used for, for uh, other uh, purposes of, 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 uh, of government uh, decision-making and, and so, so forth and so forth. Uh, but, but statistics and, and research are probably the main secondary uh, uses. Uh, the the sort of provider and primary uh, purpose of 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 register data brings us to this this sort of uh, dilemma or or issue with register data that that it's it's scattered among um, among different registries and and different sources. There is no one registry that holds information on everything. And and if if you think about the, this uh, research purpose, the, the secondary purpose for for the register data, it, it, it would be very limited if if you could only study individual registries. So, just just two two questions to to sort of uh, visualize this problem, perhaps. So, how many uh, questions? Could be answered by looking solely at at one register, say registry of infectious diseases. Uh, the question, the answer is probably that that a lot of uh, questions could be answered, but because uh, they also record background information to some extent. But then, then if 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 we pose a question, how that how many questions, research questions, could be answered by studying? Uh, uh, the combination of the linked merged registries of infectious disease, tax registries, employment registries, population registries, or or you name it, what registries? I, it, to me, at least, it sounds obvious that 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 the amount of research questions or or phenomenons that could be studied is 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 massive compared to the former case. And and this is this is the very important. Uh, aspect of register data and, and the sort of secondary purpose that that the register data is linkable. It has it has unique identifiers 
that allow linking different registries together and thus enrich the data that, that the researcher has immensely. Uh, so as, as every, every registry has some object of observation, this object of observation has all, always also a unique identifier. Uh, and, and as, as we, we uh, or I, I said that probably the most important object of observation is the human being, the most important identifier would, would then be the social security number. And, and according to the earlier example, then other, other identifiers would, for example, be company identifier, vehicle identifier, building identifier. So essentially, uh, what you in Finnish you called Utunnus, uh, I suppose you would translate that to company identifier, but then vehicle identifier is the vehicle's register number. Uh, and so with with the with these identifiers, and this cannot be uh, said enough that that it allows you to link different registries together and, and study a whole wider range of issues and questions and phenomenons than with a single register. So, so you can enrich the data uh, immensely. Uh, and, and truly, as, as we talk, there's a lot of registers. So, so uh, there's always a lot of ingenuity uh, that, that can sort of uh, give you a advantage, competitive advantage in, in, in research if, if, if you can find it. Uh, well, related to the unique identifiers, it's obviously not uh, very secure, not, not, uh, not in, the, in the nature of any, any of our regulation or data protection acts that that researchers would have access to, again, registry data is the whole group uh, and, and it's recorded continuously. So it cont contains often decades, generations of, of, of uh, whole group information. So it's not uh, feasible, possible, uh, fair, uh, any of these things that, that researchers would have uh, access to that kind of data. So there's two, two solutions to this really, and they are, or, or perhaps three, but let's, let's talk about the two, which are anonymization, which means that uh, basically the unique identifiers are simply taken away. Uh, and well, if you're studying a single register, perhaps this could still work. You could do aggregate information from this uh, if, if, if you've cleared uh, your data from uh, duplicates, but you, you only have one individual there or so forth. But definitely you couldn't link the register to another register and, and, and so on and so on. Uh, pseudonymization sort of solves this problem. So rather than taking away the unique identifiers, they're converted into pseudo identifiers. So they don't have any actual connection to the real social security number, for example. They are just a random sequence of numbers, but this random sequence of numbers is, is same, same to the same individual across different registries. So you can link different registries and data together when the data is uh, correctly pseudonymized. So this sort of solves the security concerns and requirements. Uh, the third option, perhaps, that, that I, I just uh, said that there were three might be that you would uh, also want to control the quantity of data that, that a researcher has, has access to. And, and a lot of legislation is related to that, but we'll, we'll talk about a little bit of that later on. So, so as we're, we're sort of uh, now in the, in the We've reached the topic of uh, of security and, and data protection and, and and requirements and so forth. So so let's let's uh, look at the legislation and data protection shortly. Uh, so 
most if not all of, of the registers at least in Finland and usually in other countries or EU level they have uh, they have uh, often their own legislation that governs the purpose and the use of the registry but there's all, also uh, always some sort of overarching arching legislation and regulation and uh, related to to all all registries or 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 how how data is stored and, and so forth uh, and this this happens also at the national level this happens at the eu level and also at, at the international level the un has their own uh, uh well it might be uh, legislation as in laws but at, at least sort of uh in agreements between countries uh perhaps the most important of 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 these uh, legislations in Finland uh, in, on the national level are the Statistics Act and the Act on the Secondary Use of Health and Social Data and the Data Protection Act. So, so the, these are all sort of the overarching uh, legislation and regulation. Uh, and and well, the Statistics Act basically governs uh, the the uh, Statistics Finland and, and uh, how, how researchers can uh, access uh, or under, under what rules they can access, access that kind of data. And the uh, secondary act on the secondary use of health and social data governs a whole wide, wide range of uh, registered prov providers that deal with uh, health and, and, and social data. Uh, and the Data Protection Act is, is very much related to GDPR and, and uh, governs governs the sort of uh, individual's rights and, and so forth related to data. Uh, so the legislation, uh, as, as we've talked about the purposes, pr primary and secondary purpose, the legis legislation permits the use of registered data for research, which, which is a very important uh, point. But, but there, there are variations to why or how and, and to what extent uh, different legislation permits the use. So, so that is that is where it gets complicated. And 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 when you're doing applications, you you need to always refer to the to the certain law regulating the the register. Uh, and yet these these permit applications or, or permits they're applied from from the authority that is that is maintaining or who is the provider of the of the registry uh, uh, some some distinctions between registry data because because the legislation is 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 uh, is different uh, in well, as I said, between registries, but also between different types of data. So, so normal registry data is is uh, perhaps the least difficult uh, to apply for. You you need you need a little bit less of, of reasoning why why and 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 perhaps a little bit uh, fewer laws are 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 involved but then then there's uh, sensitive registry data so this this uh, relates to individuals health politics sexuality crime etc and this is this is definitely type of data where where the legislation is quite strict and and you need clear purposes why why you need this data and, and often often this also goes that you need to uh, uh, explain your reasons for for requiring each and every var variable and time period. So uh, the application procedure gets uh, much much more labors at this point. Uh, then perhaps sort of on the side of the legislation and data protection is the is the technicalities of it. So how 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 the uh, standards of, of, of the legislation are, are achieved in, in real life. Well, as we talked about, the 
anonymization and pseudonymization. Uh, the data provided would have to be in one of those formats. Uh, I, I have heard of, of, of uh, researchers uh, gaining data even, even to their own computers uh, in the history uh, uh, of, of uh, non-anonymized or non-pseudonymized, but this is truly in, in the past. It doesn't really happen anymore. Uh, then uh, for the researcher, investigating or, or trying, trying to identify uh, you know, the unit of observation, uh, for example, the individual human, it's completely prohibited. Uh, so even though, let's say, the data is, is pseudonymized, you can, you can if, you, if you combine enough of, of the background information, you, can, you could technically uh, identify a, a certain individual. And, and the sort of crude example of this would be a small town uh, and, and say you would look at uh, over 100 or over 95 year old people in that small town. There would most likely be very few of them. And thus you would have identified an individual. You, you might not know who that individual is, but, but you definitely, uh, you know, it, it, it's it's such detailed information that 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 is that is identification of 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 that individual. Uh, so demonstrating, do uh, trying to identify or investigating that for the individual uh, for the for the researcher is completely prohibited. But then also demonstrating this sort of information is obviously uh, prohibited. So so your results. And, and of course, this could happen by accident if you didn't pay attention. Uh, so so uh, demonstrating results uh, were a given cell. So if you, you have a table of, of data, uh, aggregate data, for example, uh, the results in a, in a given cell must uh, have at least three to 10 observations behind them at a minimum, depending on the registry and, and the regulation that relates to this. There are other safeguards as well, uh, such as dominance rules uh, and, and so on. But, but the point is that the individual or the unit, unit of information is, is, it, it must not be identifiable. Uh, and this is, of course, in the case of pseudonymization. And this ensures the anonymity of the results. So they're not so pseudonymized results, they are anonymous. Uh, but yeah, as I, as I uh, perhaps mentioned already, uh, given this giving this type of data for the for the researcher, even if it's pseudonymized, it's not the one because these are often large, large data data sets. And, and the methodology used is often very uh, uh, heavy uh, in terms of computational resources, uh, but also the, especially from the legislation data protection uh, perspective, it's not, it's not practical to give this kind of information to the researcher. So as, as I've mentioned, most of that research using registers is, is, is done through Statistics Finland Remote Access Service. Uh, Findata has their own similar service these days, uh, but it's much less used than, than, than uh, uh, Fiona, so the Statistics Finland one. Uh, but the act, act on the Secondary Use of uh, Health and Social Data also defines uh, in, uh, in which ways uh, uh, or it defines the, the sort of uh, details that, that is required from, from this sort of remote access service and, and how it can be audited to, to fulfill these details. And, and this means that, that this sort of, uh, say for example, university level remote access service, secure services are, are popping up now and, and uh, probably they, they will be used in future. In, in research.
as well by using registers. Uh, so a little bit more about then the access we uh, we we sort of covered where where you could use it if 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 you had uh, if if you had been given the permit but but how do you get get the permit uh, or where where can where should you look for this kind of data uh, so uh, there there are, there are few few instances that that should be covered here. Uh, if you know that statistics of, of, of the data that you're interested in is being uh, produced by Statistics Finland, then Statistics Finland Research Services most likely has a ready-made module of the data, or at least they can tailor that data for you. And this means that you can apply for the data directly from Statistics Finland. Uh, and and that that's sort of a easy solution because they they do have uh, they do have uh, a ton of ton of different register data that that is useful in in many many research. Uh, but then if if your data is not found at uh, Statistics Finland and it relates to social data or or health data and you're applying from from more than single source, so so you're not just applying uh, data from Kela, uh, the social insurance institution, but also from the uh, National Institute of, of Health and Welfare. Uh, so two sources uh, of social and health data. Then you need to go through Fin Data. Uh, and and well, the good thing is that you can you can uh, apply. A variety, a, a large variety, uh, variety of data from different registers from thing data. Uh, but then, if if neither of the above uh, examples work, then you have to apply from the specific registrar themselves. So, so for example, something that is used quite uh, a lot in economics is uh, is the is uh, military uh, data on, on the on the conscripts uh, uh, intelligence test, you could you could call call them. Uh, so that would be applied directly from the military, uh, and and the, the list is large. And also, if if it's social and health data, but you're only interested in 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 a single source of uh, social and health data, usually this means that you can apply directly from the registrar. And and often when you're doing research, you do end up uh, uh, having to apply data from multiple sources. So you would, for example, apply from the Statistics Finland something. You would apply from the uh, National Institute of Education, uh, Fin data, uh, and as I mentioned, for example, even from the military. So a uh, little bit of the use cases then. Uh, what what are registers especially good for uh, in terms of research? Well, the important point that, that we sort of started with is that it, it is observational and comprehensive data. So so you don't sort of have to uh, often worry about uh, statistical significance. You will you will find it. it uh, actually, it's it's a problem rather often rather than uh, simply a, a good feature. Uh, and and well, because it's observational and comprehensive, it's it, it can be sort of more indicative uh, or trustworthy than than, for example, survey data. Uh, but as 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 registers, they're collected for again for the functional purpose, and they're not designed specifically for research. It, it's it's very important to understand. The register. So, so why is the data collected? Uh, how is it collected? Uh, and and sort of what, what what is the what is the phenomenon you're interested in? And and then what is the final research data that that you receive and you use for your analysis? What what happens between the phenomenon and the and the final data? So. so that that ought to be understood, or or otherwise you can make, uh, or you can interpret your results wrong. 
Okay, so so uh, some potential problems to to bear in mind or or issues for uh, say. Uh, so as I mentioned, with with large data, uh, you will not have problems in in finding uh, statistical significance at all. Uh, if anything, you will you will encounter uh, random results if you if you do. Uh, enough regressions or or whatever it is that you're doing you will you will find random statistically significant results results and and uh finding a result and then adjusting your hypothesis to fit that result uh, uh that is called shopping for results and and it's not really uh scientific and you should not be doing that uh so, so first, first have your hypothesis, have your have your uh, theory and methodology, and 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 plan your research well, and then then conduct your analysis, and then look at the results, and and see if if everything fits together. Uh, another another point is that the large data requires uh, sufficient computational resources. Uh, so so you need you need enough. Uh, Processing power and RAM and, and so forth, uh, but it also requires uh, definitely sufficient understanding of methodology, uh, obviously from from the point of your research, but also from the point of research use. So, what is the software or the code? What is it doing when you're when you're uh, when you're using a massive data sets, complicated methodology? So. You want to be as efficient in 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 the use of resources as possible because otherwise you will you will find that you're just uh, wasting your own time and and possibly the the time of others as well. Uh, so yeah, choose your outcomes and and your explanatory variables with care, because uh, uh, not every var variable is is equal. Uh, um, you should you, this this relates to the understanding of the register so so variables that will, are well recorded you you might have interesting variables in uh, in your data but before you check if 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 they are uh, actually exist you know if, if observations of that variable exist uh, they are worthless so you you want well recorded and complete uh, variables with as little uh, measurement error as possible. So, for example, death is a is a great variable in the sense that uh, it's very definitive. Uh, there's no question whether whether a person is dead or not. Not written. there shouldn't be at least. Right. Uh, so. I will, I will now uh, give you a sort of uh, case example of the use of registry data. Uh, this is not your typical use case because uh, it, it's, it's not uh, per se a research project, but uh, a rather, well, Helsinki Graduate School of Economics uh, in, the, in the spring of uh, 2020, uh, you know, with the corona situation being very chaotic, uh, decided to offer help to various ministries and, and institutions in in in, in providing uh, uh, understanding theoretical and empirical understanding of, of what is going on and, 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 and helping decision makers make decisions. That, that was the plan. Uh, but it turned out that that uh, well theory wise, no problems. But but empiric empirically there wasn't enough data. Nobody had a sort of situation room that would gather enough register data that that could be used to uh, map out what is going on in in more or le less real time. Uh, so thus the situation room was born, and and the objective was to improve the situational uh, awareness and and. And in, in general, the data-driven decision making in governments, but also offer offer uh, transparent uh, information to the public as well. Uh, 
very important uh, cooperative partners in this were, were the uh, Ministry of Finance, Statistics Finland, uh, and the National uh, Insurance Institution, National uh, Institution of Health and Welfare, uh, the National Economics uh, Institution and the, and the University of Turku, uh, to name a few at least. And, uh, Ministry of Employment and Economy was also very, very fundamental. Uh, and, and well, th this was the first real attempt to bring uh, registered data from as many sources as possible and, and as up, up to date as possible to one uh, single location and, and to be analyzed uh, in more or less real time. And, and that would provide results uh, in almost real time. Uh, and well, I'm, I'm glad to say that, that it sort of fulfilled its goal. Uh, it, it achieved uh, all this with a, with a Shoe, 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 well, very much a shoestring budget, so so uh, this didn't require uh, uh, in terms of, of what was spent, uh, extra spending during the COVID, this was not even a sand grain in, in Sahara. And, and it, it also managed, we also managed this in the frame of the existing legislation, so no no laws, laws were changed and, and, and nothing like that. But what it did require was was a lot of work and a lot of motivation and ingenuity, and this sort of it required this from all the cooperative partners. So, so uh, the the sort of um, the crisis it created a, a perfect opportunity because everybody understood the, the the difficult situation that we were in and, and how this could help. Uh, so I might be. Uh, Jumping uh, from the beginning to the end, but but uh, uh, the situation room it closed in the end of 2021. Uh, as I said, we were on a shoestring budget, and and the operations were never really formalized. The ingenuity that that was required to set it up, sort of, uh, and the motivation, uh, it it sort of waned in in the sense that that uh, some of the uh, uh, reasons why we were able to get that that amount of data that we did were because of uh, exceptional uh, decisions by statistics Finland and, and so on so on uh, but nonetheless uh, sort of official long-term continuation of the situation is in planning and, and, and should happen in, in near future whether it's called situation room or data data room or whatever that that remains to be seen and the exact uh, uh, sort of authority that it will have but but it is in planning and, and, and we we argue that it's a good thing uh, so what what did the situation room exactly do well uh, it, I, I start off with with data so for First off, and, and, and for the first time, uh, you could say earnings, earning-based employment, layoffs, new employments, new benefit applications, COVID infections, mental health diagnoses, uh, estimates of these, uh, analysis of these uh, were reported practically in real time. In the past, you, you, you would be lucky if, if you were able to find uh, year-old information regarding these subjects or topics. Uh, but but Situation Room was uh, able to bring, bring uh, this sort of reporting to about these topics to, to more or less real time. Uh, and, and obviously the sort of point is not only that we were able to report on earnings in real time, but we were able to combine merge link these data sets together and and thus create a incredibly rich uh, data pool from which to study various different phenomena so for example we were able to link covid infections to occupations and we could see which which uh, occupations were 
were at a higher risk of, of getting COVID infections. Or we could we could study the efficiency of the of the vaccinations very early on at, uh, on, uh, at uh, in doctors and and see how, for example, uh, the vaccines protected their uh, uh, their partners, families, children, and and so on immediately after, almost immediately after after being vaccinated. And actually, that 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 uh, analysis or that research uh, went on to to uh, be uh, uh, published uh, in in the Nature Communications. Uh, the link down there below in the slide. But yeah, uh, the reporting was was uh, we we had a routine reporting that was public, uh, transparent, uh, given uh, at our, our online pages. The link again in the, in the below. But this this sort of reporting was done first at a uh, weekly uh, basis, then then biweekly, and at the end because of uh, uh, well. In the autumn, perhaps there was there was a diminishing caseload, and 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 it sort of looked like COVID might be uh, not that of a, a huge deal anymore. Uh, we we did monthly routine reporting, but uh, to be honest, uh, as we as we saw uh, as the year near to its end and and New Year started, uh, this this sort of information is as 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 needed as as it ever was in the worst times of the crisis. Mm. Uh, we also uh, reported directly to ministers, usually biweekly, uh, and we had cooperation. Uh, we produced analysis for for multiple different uh, partners, uh, for example, the National Vaccine Committee, or 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 even even uh, state and municipal level uh, actors. Uh, something that that perhaps hasn't before uh, accessed uh, sort of uh, real-time data at all. Uh, and yeah, all this work was mostly done for the, for the support of decision-making and public knowledge. And, and as I said, uh, research was, was second, uh, was sort of a secondary purpose for, for all this, but, but it did produce some uh, actual publication as well and i'm not sure if if any other will come but but truly there uh, there is uh, the work that was done could be could have been used for for uh, immense amounts of publications uh if if it had been taken uh further in and and yeah you can you can find most of most of the routinely reported data and and our our uh, specific reports and and so on at, at, at our at our website at helsinki graduate school of economics .fi. Uh, and then I, I will end with with a sort of very very short glimpse to the future so I, I, I would like to say that Finland is the promised land of registry data or quality data or big data and and this is true, but at the same time, uh, registry data is definitely underused here. So, uh, for example, multidisciplinary disciplinary use is, is, is limited, but it is increasing. So, uh, usually, for example, health data has been researched by by uh, 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 by by the field of medicine, by doctors, sometimes psychologists, uh, or 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 those uh, social uh, scientists uh, very very uh, very much related to health but but it, but rarely for example uh, by economists uh, at least before in the past more and more now uh, but besides multidisciplinary use uh, a vast quantity of, of registered data is surely uh, still only used for the primary purpose. So, so this might be due to simply uh, researchers not being aware of some registry or or how to access it, or or that registry provider not having having the tools uh, to to provide it for for secondary use. So there there is uh, likely massive potential there there. 
uh, to to bring that kind of data to to the secondary use and and and, and for example through statistics Finland to to use for researchers. Uh, then then there's also large amounts of data that 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 sort of is ready for secondary use. So so uh, some some researchers might have even used it already uh, for for research and scientific use, but but it is it is so difficult to permit, uh, perhaps due to due to it being sensitive and and the the practicalities of of of, of the permit applications not being known to researchers or or being uh, sort of uh, vague for the provider. Or simply, the provider might not have the technical resources to to collect the data, and and send it or offer offer a interface where where the researcher could could use it. Uh, and and there is a lot of this kind of data, and this kind of data is usually already quite good, and and sometimes it's also in the process of 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 being uh, uh, made into statistics by Statistics Finland, but. But these are long processes, and 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 if you if you think about it, it it, it makes uh, little sense to for for uh, th there's little sense in, in efficient terms that researchers would would apply from ten different registries for their data when they when they essentially they could uh, apply it from from one source alone. So so. Uh, there, there is a there is a push and 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 desire for statistics Finland to to sort of be the the one one point of contact one hub solution to to all registry data research and and it just means that that the the their resources should be made adequate enough so that they can make ready-made modules or or they can they can collect the the sort of data that is still only in primary purpose use or or that that exists for secondary use but but is is not uh heavily used yet uh so that the researchers could could really and truly get get to use them as efficiently as possible and and, and in in as multidisciplinary setting as possible so so this is sort of where it's going the field but but it will not reach there on its own it will require uh, uh, a lot of work uh, by the scientists and the community and and also also the government and and, and uh, you know in terms of funding and, and and legislation even and well this is where i would uh, like to end this web webinar uh, hopefully you found it uh, useful